Sekhmet, the lady of the flame, the dark mother, the shadow mother. She is the goddess of healing, goddess of transmutation. She is uh, the sacred mother of the fires because it's all about alchemy when you work with Sekhmet. And she transmutes your fear into courage. She transmutes all darkness into light. She's fierce, man. She's fierce. And I'm just going to take a moment to step aside for you to see the fullness of her. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? Now, many of us here, like YouTube seems to be the place where everybody sees my Batman sign in the sky or rather my Sekhmet flames in the ethers um, because so many of us tend to meet here. And there's a very powerful meditation on this channel, which is the Sekhmet fire transmutation. And it's it's all like it seems to bring all of us here. Everybody that's done that meditation has received a massive activation and gone through initiation um, with Sekhmet. So um, and I've just got back from Egypt from the Tablets of Light tour. And, you know, there was much to share uh, with our interaction with her in her temple this time. And there's a lot. So I'm going to try and condense it down to to, you know, kind of like by size form. Um, but she is a very, very powerful alchemist. And she is quite frankly, my signature frequency. And that is what a lot of you are now experiencing, that there's this real pull to do with the, the, the lion frequency, the feline frequency that takes you in all sorts of directions. Like Bastet is, is um, connected to, to, um, to Sekhmet. Even Wajit, the snake goddess that sits on the front of her third eye, because Wajit is very, very connected, the serpent energy, very connected to, to Sekhmet. So there's lots of synchronicity and crossovers that when you start working with this goddess, she'll start to show you all those other parts of you that is all relevant and actually it all just connects into that oneness. Um, but with Sekhmet right now, I mean, like her most prominent, prominent um, message is to transmute your fear into light, your fear into courage, right? And that's what she does. You know, when I work with her, she she gifts me um, her, her very, very powerful sense of hearing. She gifts me her, her lion's roar, which is how I speak. She gifts me her lion's heart. And that is very much kind of like what she's here for right now, because we're in very, very powerful times, which is really challenging us to step, step out of our fear, you know, move out of the illusion and step into the, the highest form of vibration, which is love, light and all the rest of it. But we have to transmute so much. And she is the fire goddess. She's the lady of the flame. So that is this is the, the gift of fire that she's giving us right now. You know, so so her message to me many moons ago was bring my children home. Now, I have only just realized now that, first of all, I had to bring myself home because I was I am I was a child. Um, I had to bring myself home to me, to her, and then I could show others. And that's been my journey, uh, which kind of led me into creating the Tablets of Light tour, um, you know, which was then a meeting place for her, as well as Hathor and all the other gods and everything like that, because I'm very connected to all of them. But but Sekhmet is very dear to me. and She's very, very special. And she's starting to show herself in so many other people right now. Everybody's coming at me saying, wow, I'm connected to the fires. I'm connected to Sekhmet. What does this mean? So this is what it's all about. She's bringing her children home. Now, that can be very very figuratively like literally because I literally took my daughter back to Egypt and I took her to Sekhmet in fact we walked into the temple and we both burst into tears and that was a very very powerful homecoming a very emotional one so there is like bringing literally our children there as well as ourselves you know but but we're all children of Sekhmet she loves us and fights for us fierce, fiercely um, uh, and and fiercely, fiercely as well. And that's what our journey is all about now, to step into this power, to this energy, to this frequency. Find your lion's roar. Proclaim your power. Claim your power. And the way we do that is to really harness the fires of Sekhmet within. Now, her message that came through very, very powerfully today is fire can give you two experiences. It can maim, it can kill, it can scar, it can harm right? But fire, when tended to, and we hold the space for it, and we come in on an empowered level to meet that element, right? It can it can cleanse, it can transmute, it can heal. It can even feed us because we cook our food on it. It can even warm the bones, you know, our cold bones. It can also make things. 
glass, you know, horseshoes, whatever you want to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like if we work with fire, it's extremely creative. But if we let it burn out of control, that's when our shadow comes online and our rage is just going, you know. So the first place that Sekhmet will activate you, the first place that Sekhmet will now show you is your shadow because she's a shadow mother. She's a shadow worker. OK, um, she's a shadow queen, man. And she will show you your rage. You know, let me tell you, everybody that connects with Sekhmet, the first place you get shown is your rage, your absolute anger at unfulfilled missions, your absolute anger at maybe uh, being a wounded divine feminine or a wounded divine masculine, just anger. All of that needs to be harnessed. So that's the first place you start with Sekhmet because she will show you that anger. And when you get first get initiated with Sekhmet, that process going through your shadow to do with anger and rage and all the rest of it, it can either way, it's going to be a little bit stingy and sore, but you can make it really difficult for yourself and resist it and just walk around spewing that rage everywhere. She'll just sit and wait and she'll just basically wait, wait, wait. And then when the time comes, she'll give you a massive paw slap and oh, knock my microphone over. <laughs> she'll go do that. Um, or she'll sit there fiercely holding the space for you while you walk through and you trial by fire. Do you know what I mean? So it really is up to you how how smoothly um, you go through that. And that's all about resistance at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It's like, that's all about resistance. So you can fight it or you can work with it, which is what is the point? I'm, that is the point I'm bringing home. Working against fire and working with it is the working against it, resistance, scar, maim, kill, harm, or work with it, transmute, activate, initiate, you know, um, heal all the rest of it. Do you know what I mean? But the fire within you is your superpower. The fire is what you want to now work with and claim because we work with those four elements, right? Fire, air, water, earth, right? Or whatever order you want to put them in. Now, fire is such a powerful force for all of us, right? But like I say, we have to know how to how to calm those fires. And that's essentially your healing. That's essentially, you know what I mean? Going from your going, working through your shadow self and coming into the light. So when you work with Sekhmet, many of you that have already worked with her, it ain't easy because she's going to take you to those places that you don't want to look at. She's going to take you deep into your shadow. You don't want to go there. It's scary. And I'm going to share a short story with you now. When I first really met with Sekhmet, it was maybe four Egypt trips ago. And I remember being squashed up against a wall at the side. So you walk into her sanctuary, her beautiful Holy of Holies. There she stands. We had this group. Everybody was in this room. I was squashed up to the side of the wall. And because I'd already been to Egypt, I'd already met her. And everybody in the group, they hadn't met her before. So I just I just humbly stood, stood aside and what actually happened is I ended up getting really close to her statue. So I was here and I started to hear a voice saying, you will bring my people to me. You will bring my children home. And I remember, I mean, I wasn't this person back then. And I remember thinking, no, there's no way. There is absolutely no way. I mean, like, you know, I I, I, I was dealing a lot with inadequacy, smallness and that. I was like, no. And she said, but the, what you're going to do is it's going to be very different to what you see here. And it will not be the same. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? You know, will I be working with other people? And she's like, that is for you to find out and for you to return to me again and again and again, which you will. And I remember walking out of that sanctuary out of that interaction with her and thinking, hell nah, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm not taking my groups to Egypt. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, but I'm just getting enough courage to work with clients one-on-one -on -one at my home. Never mind that. Do you know what I mean? So I basically shoved it to the side while she was having none of it. It was my sole agreement. And then guess what? Year after year, I ended up coming to see Sekhmet every year. And every year there was a progression moving closer to what she had uh, commanded, ordained, and basically called and summoned me and said, this is what you're going to do. So that was the very first moment of me stepping up and being, um, you know, kind of like a foot soldier, maybe a lieutenant of Sekhmet. And now that is all, that is what my work entails. That is what I'm about now. When people connect with me, you know, they either are activated in a bad way, that's the fire and I'm the mirror you don't want to look in, or they're activated in a good way where they're like, woo, my fire's come online. What just happened there? Whatever. And that is what's going to happen with you. This is, this is the mission. I am bringing all my 
Sekhmet brothers and sisters to this place so you can activate those fires within you the same way because when people make contact with you, you will have the same activation with others just by being you. Your fires are online. But we have to get your shadow flames and we have to tame them claim that power, reclamation of power. That's what the lion's roar is all about. When you roar in the sky or when a lion does a wild lion, because I live in Africa, I've observed them lots. I've, I've, yeah, I just was always in the bush with the, with the wild lions. And if you watch them, when they roar, they are proclaiming their power. They're putting their boundaries out. They're saying to those other lions, K's away, hey, this is my spot. And when they roar in, in different tones, you hear your, you feel your ribcage rattle. It is incredible. But what they're doing is they're uh, proclaiming their power and they roar at the sun. Now, Sekhmet's father is Ra, okay, the sun god. So we can unpack this and kind of really bring in so much more because she's a sun goddess. She's all about that fire. Um, you know, so and that's why she has obviously the sun disc above her head, because it's obviously she is a sun goddess. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically what happens with the lion frequency and the lion energy. So it's a great place to start to understand and know that first of all, you have to claim your power, you have to claim your fire. And then when you are ready, Sekhmet will then say, right, out you go. You also bring my children home to me, please. And that is the mission. That is the mission, right? You're not out there to rescue anybody. You just give your lion's roar and they come because they can feel that vibration. Now, each time I go back to Egypt, I take I take more and more beings there because I just deliver them to her. And what we have just um, experienced, which is so beautiful, like in my past experience going to Egypt, you tend to go and see Sekhmet all in a group, but this is not the way you roll when you come with me. I. It's very important that you, on your pilgrimage, you arrive at the Sekhmet temple, I stand outside, so does the group, and you go in one by one by one. You have your own time with her, and that is so important because what happens between you and her, no one must get in the middle of, okay? That isn't a soul agreement between you and her. Um, I honor Sekhmet in the highest way because uh, that is my deepest respect for your mission and your journey and for her who summoned you. I don't get involved in that. But when you go there and you walk in, you will be absolutely awestruck. You will be so surprised as the energies and frequencies that come over you when you go home and you meet your mother and you walk in humbly you walk in slowly and you walk in heart open. And I tell you what, she will gift you everything. Every time I have been there, there's been a magical, magical experience. So it's time, it's time for you to come home. And if you're watching this video this far, then it's time for you to come home. So this is the message of, of, of Sekhmet right now. And I will be sharing a lot more with, with other stuff that she wants to share. But right now I wanted to do this video because um, many are experiencing such powerful activations with her fire that even after doing the meditation, um, even coming to Egypt, you know, some people feel massive activations in their body. Their fires are raging and they can't calm them, right? And there's a deeper understanding to know what that's all about because, um, and I'm gonna do another video on that because that's understanding very, very deeply about what your soul mission is with the fires of Sekhmet, how you're supposed to work with them, which is a very unique thing because we all have a unique soul design. So your contract with Sekhmet will be unique in itself as is mine, right? So it's to, it's to honor that. But what needs to be understood and grounded now is how to harness these fires. So the first place you go is grounding. And she showed me today that she was in the center of the earth with Gaia. And she showed me, she said, bring the fire into the internal fires and the core of Gaia, and then connect with those fires down there. And then anchor yourself into the heartbeat of Gaia, into the heartbeat of me, into my sacred fires, because I I'm everywhere. I'm segment. So it's very, very powerful what she's actually activating with us, uh, with, with each and every one of us right now. She's very prominent. She's very upfront and center. So it felt, felt very right to actually do this video now because um, shit's popping off. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it's time. So if you're feeling it and if you're feeling her, so many people are reaching out. It's time for us to come together. No more hiding in the background now. It's time for you to step forward and understand what is your contract with her? What have you come here to do? Because you are so needed. You're so valued. You're so needed. And um, yeah, and then Egypt may be calling you. Egypt may be a place where you really to need to get on top of this. And through my teachings, through her teachings, which are my teachings because she comes through me, 
It might be the very agreement that you and I have. So if you resonate with any of this, we are going to Egypt in May the 9th, 2024. We will go back to her again and we will meet with her again. Um, and we will go and meet with her um, her other aspect, Hathor. So all of this is very relevant, really pa very powerful. And the Tablets of Light Tour is really, really, it's not a spiritual tour, spiritual holiday. It's very, very unique, specific and sacred in its agenda. I don't want to use that word too much, but like, because it sounds a bit clinical, but in its in its focus, in its intention, intention is a better word. So, you know, if this resonates with you, it's a soul thing, you know, so let's get on a no cost Zoom call and start discussing your possibilities about coming to Egypt. However, if you feel that there is maybe a pre a pre thing to it, first of all, get in touch as well, because we have the HECA codes. Now, the HECA codes might turn into a activation from Sekhmet. HECA codes are the three sessions that I run. Um, and you get your own personal um, meditation that, that that is also frequency encoded after each session. So it may be that you have like a, the, a secrets of Sekhmet mentorship coming up and it's going to be run through the HECA codes, which is done online. Um, and yeah, we work like this. So, you know, it, it's really going into your soul energy, sitting quietly and feeling what is the next step for you right now? Because let me tell you, New Earth has landed. We're already in the 5D, but a lot of our soul aspects are still in in the 4D and you're not supposed to be there. You're supposed to be here with me, with her. So if any of this resonates, just go to the link in the write-up, click on there and you'll see no cost Zoom call, book on and let's let's chat. Let's see, let's, let's see where this goes. Anyway, for now, love and blessings from myself and my mother, Sekhmet. Peace and love y'all. And thanks always for just showing up, being here, listening, receiving. Love y'all. Like honestly, love y'all to the multiverse and back. Thanks for watching. Peace.